Hello everyone, thanks for tuning into today's bird video. We're going to have a look at the weather for the next 10 to 14 days for today's bird video. Day 10 will take us to the 20th of January and we'll be able to send out beyond that with the excellent GFS and ECF ensembles. Maybe I'll try in a couple of weeks. We'll have a look at CFSB2 at the end of the video for February. And I should get on with that for you in a moment, just to say that first. The video says at 6 a.m. UK weather forecast. We've also released January Friday too. Check out those two bits if you'd like to do that. Like, share, subscribe on all today's videos and content. Thank you so much, everyone, for doing that for Gareth's weather. Thank you so much, everyone. Um, not sure if we did pub run live tonight or not. The voice of Rome landed quite a bit better. I took the day off yesterday. I thought I'm just going to take the day off, zip my mouth up, and just stay completely quiet all day, which is what I did. Didn't utter a word to anybody all day. Yesterday, so I had to record the 6 a.m. forecast late on in the evening anyway. But I was virtually silent all day. And I think it's out quite a bit with the uh, uh, with, with, uh, throat and with the voice. Um, but nothing 100%. So um, I'll let everybody know a little bit later on about Pub Run Life. But we'll perhaps have a quiet one um, tonight in the towers. But uh, I'll see. I'll let everybody know on socials by about 9 p.m. Anyway, let's get on with your 10 to 14 there. I hope you're having a lovely Friday. It's certainly very cold out there, so I uh, hope you're managing to uh, keep warm. Right, let's have a look at the Arctic Oscillation then. So, uh, this is the AO observed and forecast chart. The black line shows where we've been with the Arctic Oscillation. Red lines at the end where the GFS ensembles are forecasting the Arctic Oscillation to go. So we've been very negative uh, with the uh, AO, had a lot of dormant blocking that's induced this cold weather that we've been uh, enjoying or enduring, depending on your point of view. We're still very negative with the AO at the moment, but as we go towards the middle of January, you see the AO coming up. The second half of January looking very different to the first half with a generally positive Arctic station uh, being forecast there. There's a lot of scatter within those red lines, so obviously these on some members up here are producing very positive AO conditions, but we do have a significant number of the GFS on some members that after a push-up in the AO actually drop it back down into negative territory again. So there is a bit of uncertainty, especially as we push on towards the final week of January, I think, about exactly where the AO is going, and that is telling us there's uncertainty in terms of the blocking as well. So uh, it is going to be a case of watch this space, but we're definitely going to lose the blocking at least for a while uh, next week. The NAO looks like this. Again, the black line shows where we've been with the North Atlantic Oscillation Red Lines up again with the GS GFS Ensembles forecasting NAO to go. So that also has been in significantly negative territory over the uh, past uh, 10 days or so, went negative on New Year's Day with the start of the cold weather and uh, kept in negative territory since then. It's a slower rise, but we see the LEO is being forecast to come back up there through the uh, second half of January. So this really is a signal for the weather to be turning milder with the NA, with the NEO and the AO both going back into positive territory. Um, you know, it's a signal for minor conditions. But there is a bit of uncertainty within that, especially with the uh, AO in terms of the northern blocking and uh, how much of that uh, we have into the second half of January. So it's a case of watching space, but generally it looks like things will be turning milder into the uh, second half of January. Uh, Central temperature is very cold, but it has been a very cold sort of uh, first 10 days of the uh, month CT, currently sitting at just 2.3. That's, that's just over 1.5 degrees uh, below the 61 to 99 average and it's provisional to uh, yesterday, to the 9th of January. That will carry on coming down further. There's more cold days, cold nights to come into the weekend. So I reckon that will drop into the ones by the start of next week and then should start coming back up again. These are the GFS upper air temperature and precipitation ensembles the next couple of weeks. We're going to exit today. The red line is the first year upper air temperature average or exeter. We're starting off below average, of course, at the moment. Still cold. We're going to find the upper air temperatures gradually coming up through the weekend, particularly into next week, looking a lot milder with the upper air temperatures and I think with the surface temperature too. There is a decline in the upper air temperatures, both from the end of the third week into the final week 
uh, but January. Uh, it's accelerating, a bit unreliable, and you'll notice the thick green line here to the GFS 6 z operational run. That's at the colder end of the range. So, when well, you see that in a moment, just keep that in mind. It does actually go... <coughs> So, sorry, but it does actually go uh, quite cold in the extended period. Precipitation-wise, so uh, there's some showery bursts in the far southwest at the moment, but generally, the next sort of week or so, going to have a lot of dry weather. Could be starting to turn more and settle as we get on into the uh, end of the third week of January. Temperature anomaly is from the temp to the 18th of January are colder than average for England and Wales, milder than average for Ireland and Scotland. And precipitation anomaly is from the temp to the 18th of January. Most areas are coming out drier than normal. Latest wind blow map from EarthNoSchool.net shows that uh, we've still got high pressure in control. It's actually sitting over the country today, blocking off these areas of low in the Atlantic. Maybe uh, we'll start to bring some southwest winds back in, though, by the uh, early part of next week. Right, let's start going through the chart data, then, and that brings us very nicely to the UK Met Euro run, starting on Monday the 13th of January. High pressure has gone down to France by that point, and we're drawing up a southwest wind, so looking much wilder for the start of next week, especially so in the north. And then all of next week really shaping up to be mild, with high pressure... At 1,035 millibars over France, low pressure in the Atlantic. So we're drawing the air up from the Azores. So all change next week after this week's really cold weather. Next week looking very mild. Icon also is uh, very similar. High pressure centred over France. Low pressures away to the northwest. And so uh, it looks very mild. Drawing up the air from the Azores. Um, no pressure out in the Atlantic. Could bring some wet and windy weather into Scotland. But uh, generally relatively dry next week, I think. Uh, but turning very mild. The KMA uh, looks like that. And again, drawing up those southwest winds, bringing a lot of mild weather with it. A little bit more aware of high pressure uh, for uh, England and Wales in the second half next week. Might deliver some frost and fog there. Um, but to very mild in the northwest anyway. And eventually, look at this, it tries to set up some higher pressure towards Scandinavia and uh, Western Russia. So by the time we get to about 22nd of January. <coughs> So, sorry, everyone, by the time you get to about 22nd of January, have got a bit of a battle going on with uh, a lot of high pressure to our uh, east and low pressure out to uh, the west. So, that's probably going to be my wet, windy, but it wouldn't take that much of an adjustment for high pressure set up over Scandinavia. Uh, but GFS midnight run, again, much of a muchness for next week, although it does have more high pressure the England Wales, which could keep some frost and fog going, actually, especially into the second half of next week. Always looking milder, wet and windier, though, for Scotland and Ireland. And from around about day 10 onwards, we find their pressure has started to come in from the Atlantic, bringing some wet weather with it. However, notice the uh, GFS midnight run is trying to get a Scandinavian high going as well, and it does actually bat the wind into the east by the 22nd of uh, January, not particularly cold easily with the upper air temperature, but still will have a chill to it, uh, probably with um, overnight frost and fog. Uh, and then we turn wet and windy as low pressure comes sweeping in from off the Atlantic right at the very end. But still that high pressure is lurking away to the north end, so we've got to keep an eye on that. If uh, that strengthens, you know, that will bring the colder weather back into the final week or 10 days or so of uh, January. The GFS 6 said is much of a much this for Monday with both southwesterly winds. And then high pressure builds up from the snow to the middle of the second half next week, bringing a lot of dry weather with it, but also could bring frost and fog to England and Wales. Probably not as much as Scott to Northern Ireland. Definitely more high pressure further north with the GFS output today compared to the uh, other models. And now we get to day 10, and uh, the uh, GFS is trying to get that high pressure up towards Scandinavia. And in the extended range, remember on the ensemble graph, we saw that the uh, GFS 6 said was actually be cold at end of the range. And that is because it sets up this blocking area of high pressure. It's really the Siberian high, actually, over, Scandin over Russia. But it is bridging in towards Scandinavia 
as well. And that gradually starts to bring the wind around to the east. It starts to pull some colder air in from the east as well. So the GFS 6 then is going cold into the uh, last week of January here with these areas of low pressure again and the mild air being blocked off from the Atlantic. Going a little bit further with that, with a GFS 6 compared to the big night run, but they are sort of in the same ballpark there, uh, and uh, bring cold weather back for the last week of January. How serious we take that? Um, you know, I'm not sure you're patient whether you take your choice of GFS. It's a long way out. But, uh, you know, it's a possibility. Well, if you enjoyed the video, please do like, share and subscribe. Make sure you everyone for doing that. Why not drop a comment? Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos and content, live streams, etc, etc, etc. And uh, don't forget to tell your friends about Gals Weather Vids and get them to subscribe too. And thank you so much, everybody, for uh, doing that. We need to put on... Around uh, 40, 30 subscribers, sorry, to get ourselves to uh, 19.4k. So if you could give us a sub, that would be awesome. Thank you so much, everyone. Right, GM again, bringing up that southwesterly wind on Monday, looking very mild through uh, next week and keeping it mild through next week with the GM as well. Further south with that high pressure compared to the GFS means that we drag up the air from the uh, Azores. So mostly dry in the south, more uncertainty at all. And very mild, perhaps a bit wet, windy by day 10. And then the ECM rounds it all off again, drawing up those southwesterly winds through next week, much milder uh, next week. Even in the south, we should bring down that mild air, we should bring in that mild air from the Azores. And by the weekend of the 18th, 19th of January, starting to turn more unsettled with lower pressure coming in from off the Atlantic. Day 10 looking properly unsettled wet windy with that area of low pressure and then the east end really unsettled in the extender as well low pressure gives us a proper old battering lots of wet windy weather but at least it would be mild this is the precipitation forecast based on that to ecm run from tometcho.com Lots of dry weather to come, uh, of course, through the next few days. But by the end of next week, gradually starts to turn more unsettled. Initially, in the north and the west, and then those more unsettled conditions gradually spreading southwards and eastwards. Uh, by day 10, we're looking uh, properly wet and windy then. These are the options on the table within the ECM ensembles today. For day 10, from the Icelandic Met Office, gets us to the 20th of January, 26 members the be ECM on top. Now, it's quite interesting because that's similar to what the GFS is doing uh, with high pressure to the east and trying to bring in colder air from the east again, uh, I think, compared to 25, including the control and the operational run that are Maya wet windy at day 10. So it's virtually a 50-50 split whether we're going to be settled or unsettled at day 10. <laughs> and then in two weeks' time, these are the options that we've got. Gets us to the 25th of January. 29 members of the East Shell on side, looking very unsettled. Low pressure coming in from the Atlantic, bringing a lot of wet, windy weather in with it, but mild. And then 22, with high pressure up towards Scandinavia, low pressure being blocked in the Atlantic. And there's the possibility of bringing colder air in from the east of that, such as we saw on the GFS at 6 Rub. So there is a definite possibility that the cold weather could come back here into the last week of January. It's not the most supporting option within the uh, ECM ensembles, but I think we have got to keep an eye on, on the possibility anyway. Uh, CFS meets you finally for February. This is the latest 700 millibar height anomaly prediction. Remember, these charts change daily. So today's idea has high pressure dominating into Northern Europe and out into the Atlantic as well. Low pressure is up here. So looking mostly dry again for February. A mild of an average rub is being uh, forecast and not much of a signal for precipitation. A lot of rain in the Atlantic, but we're probably a little bit drier. The CFS has moved that high pressure northwards compared to what it was forecast in February a few days ago. Did something similar in December for January. Um, you know, and eventually the high pressure went so far north that it actually brought in this uh, cold sort of uh, first uh, half of January. So again, let's just wait and see where things are going. It might not be a straightforwardly mild February as we've been anticipating, but we shall see. 
and time as ever will tell. Right, we're done. So if you enjoyed the video, please give like, share and subscribe. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Drop a comment. Let us know what you think about this and all of our videos, content, live streams, etc, etc, etc. And don't forget to tell your friends about Gals World as well. Get them to subscribe too. And uh, let's get to 19.4k. Thanks so much everyone for doing that. Right, so I'll let everybody know a little bit later on about Pub Run uh, Live. I think I'm probably going to give a voice to them for a rest zone tonight. But I'll confirm that uh, this evening on the socials. Tomorrow, we're going to have 6 10 forecast. East Ham WF 42 day forecast. Week head and also take 14 day on Sunday, we've got 6 a.m. broadcast coming up. The first update for spring is on the way as well. We begin to get back on the long range bandwagon after taking December of a new year off. So, first spring update. Uh, will be a release on Sunday morning. And then uh, we're going to be live at 6 p.m. on Sunday with Ensembles Watch and uh, all of that good stuff. So, lots to look forward to over the weekend. Uh, you enjoyed the rest of your Friday afternoon slash evening, whenever you're watching the video. And for this one, that's all for now. And thanks for watching.